was for a long time a close companion of Padre Pio and looked after him in his later years. This is the place where Padre Pio received the stigmata on the 28th September 1918. From this letter here, you can see that Padre Pio was praying here when he saw this crucifix alive, dripping blood. And in that moment, Padre Pio felt an extraordinary peace inside of himself and outside. And during this time, Padre Pio always saw the crucifix alive, dripping blood. And he said that when he came out of this trance, I would say, he realized that his hands, his feet and his side were pierced like the crucifix. This is the very first photograph of his wounds. It was later witnessed by a notary. News of this astounding event slowly spread, and the ordinary people began coming to San Giovanni in large numbers to catch a glimpse of the stigmatized friar or to squeeze into the church to hear his mass. Understandably, perhaps, the attitude in the friary to the unique stigmatization of a young priest was one of extreme reservation. There was talk of transferring Padre Pio to another part of Italy, but the people of San Giovanni clamored for him to stay. There were even threats of violence. Eventually, something had to be done. A decision had to be made. Such notoriety can be an embarrassment rather than a blessing. In 1923, the Holy Office intervened with a series of measures. It declared that there were no signs of the supernatural in the case, and ordered Padre Pio not to say mass in public and to cease all written correspondence. When the decree was read to him, he said, God's will be done. So began the years of seclusion, when Padre Pio became a priest without a congregation, a confessor unable to give absolution, a Christian without a spiritual director. He immersed himself totally in prayer and spiritual writing and reading and wrote the words Resta Con Me. Stay with me, Lord. Thou knowest how thee I can forget. Stay with me, Lord. Thou knowest without thy strength I fall. Stay with me, Lord. For without thee my fervor fails. Stay with me, Lord. Thou art my light, thou art my life. Some time passed before the ban was lifted. Pope Pius XI, on further examination of the facts, permitted Padre Pio to resume his ministry. Eventually, a larger church had to be built to accommodate the huge congregations made up of people who came from all over the world. The flow of pilgrims began again with renewed fervor. They came then, and still they come. Padre Pio often spent 12 to 18 hours a day in the confessional. Even so, so many people came that a wait of two or even three weeks was not unusual for visitors who wished to be absolved by this charismatic figure, who always tried to keep his hands covered or hidden. He knew when people were wasting his time, when they had come for the wrong reasons, and occasionally terminated a confession abruptly with the word, Basta! Enough! He could read your mind, your soul, and when God gave him the light to see the soul of a person, Padre Pio really, you know, would tell him or oh, hey, the, the sins, and also if sometimes they are not ready or they were not sincere in their confession, he would, you know, send them away without a solution. He was usually disarmingly simple and direct. Nothing could be more to the point than change your life or 
to someone who questioned the very existence of hell, you will believe it when you get there. He was capable, though, of remarkable insight, and there are many reports of his ability to read people's minds and their hearts, to know details of their lives and circumstances that he could not possibly even guess. Once, a woman was very surprised to be told that her penance, usually a prayer to be said in atonement for sin, was to go home and look in the well in her garden. As she did so, she saw the face of the son she had had aborted many years before. Joe Greco, now a great devotee of Padre Pio, met him in very unusual circumstances. After a dream in which he met Padre Pio on the road and asked him to save his father, Joe Greco's father suddenly recovered from a dangerous operation. Joe decided to go to San Giovanni to thank Padre Pio in person. He managed to get to confession after waiting four days. This is what did it, really. When he saw me, he said, Well, your father's all right, then. Well, this shattered me, really, because I'd never been down in San Giovanni Rotondo before. I'd never been down that part of the world. Neither did I know anyone down there. And yet, I posed in my mind a question to him. I was saying, was it you? Was it you? And he replied, in the dream. In the dream. Well, I started shaking. I was scared stiff to tell you the truth. I said, yes, Father, in the dream, Father. I told him my, my sins and he gave me, abs uh, and he, before he gave me absolution, he said to me, now then, there is something else, you know. I says, well, Father, I said, I can't remember anything else. And Padre Pio went on to describe an incident with a girl in the park when he was first in the army. Well, it all came back to me. I'd ho I wished the ground had have opened up and swallowed me up. I was so embarrassed. Oh dear, I said, yes, Father, it all comes back to me and I'm, I'm afraid I've forgot to tell it in confession. I'm so ashamed. Well, he said, you've been carrying this sin around with you, he says, ever since 1941. And the place was Blackburn, to tell you the truth. And I got up to go. Padre Pia said, there is something else you've forget forgotten. And there was a slight smile on his face. I said, oh no, Father, truly there's nothing else that I can remember. I thought he was on about a sin, you know. And uh, he said, look in your pocket. So... <laughs> I brought my rosary beads out, I gave them to him, he blessed them, and he gave them back to me. And he, that was it. Those who knew Padre Pio talk with undying affection and admiration of a man who spent 50 years in extreme pain. For there is no doubt that he suffered real anguish from real wounds. The medical evidence of the stigmata, supplied by doctors who examined Padre Pio over the years, is impeccable. Dr. Luigi Romanelli, Dr. Giorgio Festa, and Padre Pio's personal physician, Dr. Sala, provided documentary evidence, as did many other independent medical experts, that the wounds were genuine and showed no signs of either healing or festering. Father Stefano is the superior of the Capuchin Friari at Pietrelcina where they have a room devoted to the many relics of Padre Pio's life. Of all the mementos we have here, the most important is Padre Pio's nightshirt, which, as you can see, is stained with his blood. How did this happen? We know that Padre Pio experienced the whole of Christ's passion, the scourging, the crowning with thorns, the wounds of the stigmata, and that in his own words, the